Hi there. Today I will talk about smooth sync um, or silky smooth sync, um, which in reality is called windowed sync. Now, if you Google windowed sync, you'll get a completely different topic, which is the um, sync function S I N C as opposed to S Y N C. And even if you find some articles about windowed sync, um, I'd say you won't get the best sonic results. Uh, I saw some people are windowing with uh, triangle wave, uh, and uh, in VCV rack we can actually do much better. All right, so let's start from recreating the classic sync. We're grabbing a saw, and the saw will be synced by another oscillator. So we recognize this sound, um, very violent, brutal. Uh, we all love it. It's very useful for sound design. But notice what happens when we're syncing with sine wave. Uh, I don't mind if you love the sound, but uh, I have a problem with that. It's, uh, it's a, there's a disconnect between the smooth sine wave and clicking sounds. And I think in musical context, it's uh, on a more emotional level. There's this mismatch. Uh, so is much straightforward um, violence, and this one is, is just too too smooth. However, I, I still like that kind of flute overblown sound. And all I need is get rid of these little discontinuities. And as it turns out, there's actually a very simple method in uh, VCV. All you need is two ring mods. So the way it works is you're grabbing this first um, oscillator uh, signal and multiply, you have to multiply it by itself. In other words, you're raising this to the power of two. And what happens is that we get that really nice windowing function here. Notice that whenever the, the sync occurs, windowing function goes to zero. So now all that is left is you're taking that windowing function and multiply it by our signal. Ta-da! This is what we need. And now let's compare it actually. Um, so the the red, or what is it, pink, um, is um, our windowing function, and the blue is the signal that we hear. And that's the method. Now, what you could do further with this is, um, well, first of all, you can take that um, signal that you already multiplied uh, or raised to the power of two, and you can multiply it once again. So you're raising it to the power of three, right? And you have a slightly different shape, but you still can use it um, to multiply by your main signal, and your sync will be even more smooth. What is even more interesting is if we take wave shapers, um, Hedrick has some nice um, shapers, um, and uh, instead we are going, we're taking this windowing function and we're going to go through a shaper. And uh, we also need a preview here. Alright, so notice what happens. We have a f we have full signal, right? We have we have obviously we are, we are introducing some nonlinearities here. So, but I think it's nice. So, if your signal feels too tame, too boring, you can always experiment with wave shaping the the actual windowing function, not the signal itself. And I think this is so much fun. Think think about what what happens, for example. Um, Okay, so instead of going out, we're going through a wave folder now. And here we go. So now 
I'm folding my wave shaping, sorry, my uh, windowing function. How fun is that? And not only that, notice how um, beautifully these two modules will interact with each other. Notice now we can, you can, you know, um, do CV modulation on all three of them. Um, I mean, all you have to remember is that that windowing function has to go to zero over here. So some of the analog modeling modules might not be good. So I would recommend every shaper that is digital in nature and extremely precise. Ooh. I think I have to stop here because it's so much fun. I will I will never finish this uh, tutorial. Anyway, um, yeah, have fun. <laughs>